We've got Darren Hughes here from Scotstown, Monaghan. Darren's going to tell us a little bit about the robot, his cows, and the farm and he owns. So Darren, where you go? Um, installed a robot here in December 2013. So we're into our third year on the grazing platform now. So working AB system with, with 85 cows at the moment on it. Um, working well, a lot more fluent this year now. Um, just better management structures and cows more used to the system than that. Um, as I said, work the AB platform, the B, B side where they go at night is probably at their longest would be 1.5 kilometers, at uh, the shortest, 600 meters of a walk. So they have a distance to go, but there's no issue with, with cow movement there um, once the, the grass management's sorted. In terms of cows, Darren, you might just tell us a little bit about production and roughly just milkings per day and concentrates. Are you feed more or less concentrates this year? Um, I was down on two kilos of concentrate, just a shortage of grass there in the last couple of weeks. So they're up to three and a half. Um, cow production would be up a couple of hundred liters from overall, uh, it'd be about 5,000 litre average herd. Um, I suppose just increasing um, cow quality in that through breeding at the moment um, is where my main targets are being hit. How's milk? Got, got, must, uh, 21 litres at the minute. Okay. Um, been pretty constant this past three to four weeks, despite the weather. Um, 33% heifers in the herd, so um, happy enough with where it's at at the moment. How are you coping with the milk price? Yeah, here it's, it's not great, but I suppose it's about managing your overheads and um, I suppose when the check comes in, you, you balance it to pay out what has to be paid out and look after yourself first and foremost, I suppose. And um, here getting by, um, love the increase, I suppose, but uh, getting by and I suppose it's only so long that can last too. What's the plans for the future? Any plans um, on the farm in the yeah, next three year plan? Yeah, I suppose grazing platform, I could probably carry an extra 20 to 30 cows um hoping the price is right the uh, second robot in the next 18 months to two years um so uh, the the grazing platform will definitely carry 110 to 15 if not 120 cows with three seeding and everything that i'm at at the minute so um that's where my my plan at for say three years i see you've the place nicely set up there and, and, and i'd imagine the hours spent on farm has reduced but just ten, take me through the working day when you arrive here what you do and how many hours you're spending on the farm to ensure everything is working according to plan? Um, I suppose I'll, I'll be on the farm at seven or half seven in the morning and um, whatever few things need to be done up, a bit of tidying up with cows or that, if there's any sweeping or that to be done, some mornings there is, some mornings they're not. They set up the fences on one o'clock in the morning and one o'clock in the afternoon get um, changed. So um, it could take to half eight, nine o'clock by the time calves fed and different things. and. Then up breakfast and I suppose a couple of other bits of jobs as well. So generally be away for most of the day. Keep an eye on the thing on the phone if there's any major concerns. I'll get home or I'll get somebody to look after them. It's not not a major occurrence most of the time. So um, back home five or six o'clock. An hour's walk moving fences, tidying up again, and that's it to seven o'clock in the morning. So effectively, Darren, you, you, you're gone all day, really. Well, no, the hours here, in the morning, the hours in the evening. Yeah, but, here I'd give myself, I'd always allow myself three to four hours here if, if needs be, two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. Um, obviously, the calving and all is over whenever the calves have been fed, but I was feeding calves at half seven in the morning in February and March rather than standing in a pit. So, um, you just a couple of hours afterwards, but it was, it was longer in the spring, obviously. Um, treating cows and different things, but now I suppose we're over in the main season that um, it's a bit more fluid. Perfect. And last thing, Darren, I noticed us being the lazy guys had to get back into this fine Jeep and drive to the paddocks. How far is it from where the cows is all the way back to the robot? Uh, it'll be about 1.4, I suppose, there it is. It's exactly a kilometre. 1.4 metres or kilometres. kilometres? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Long way. No problem, cows travelling? Ah, oh, no problem there. No. The What's the key, Darren, to get the cows to move? Uh, Grass, grass management. I, I wasn't grass measuring in the first year. I started grass measuring last year, and that was the that was the key. How important is that, Darren? It's I couldn't do it without it because the first year I thought I was going into heavy or light paddocks, and there might have been a seventeen hundred cover on them, and cows just they weren't moving. So yeah. um, try and get into fourteen, fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred at a push, maybe in early spring when there's there's good growth, but. Um, no, I did the grass measure, uh, measurements, the big and, driver. And last but not least, your advice to new customers buying a robot in terms of grass and grass management, allocation and movement, what's your advice, one line? <sighs> Buy the clippers. <laughs> so measure the grass. Measure the grass, it's, it's, it's a must in my eyes. Thank you, Darren. No problem.